Your perspective on the, the session today, as Michael said, you really can't guess how investors are going to react to data in the States at the moment with the Fed involved. I think the non-farm payrolls was a major factor and the fact that the markets thought that maybe tapering would be eased back a little bit. And that was seen in things like prices of gold where we did see the gold price up about half a percent. In fact, some of the gold miners, some of the best performers during the session today, we saw Newcrest mining up by a massive 7.1 percent. We also saw Oceana gold up by 5 percent. And in fact, Newcrest mining is up 40 percent in the year to date so far. And we're not even through the second month of the year. If we have a look at the market. It was a very impressive performance by the Aussie share market. I've just got the intraday graph behind me and you can see that we rallied into the close and we had a very strong closing auction. So by the end we were up by 1.1%. The positive thing is that uh, in terms of technicals we regained that 200 day moving average and now look to be testing that 100 day moving average but it was on very light volumes. We saw less than $4 billion worth of stock being traded. Having said that it was really about the financial sector and the materials sector today both of these areas shining brightly but all sectors were trading higher but the worst sectors were staples utilities as well as property in fact just looking at the top 20 and it tells you a lot about the mentality of this session where we did see all of the top 20 blue chips trading higher except for two stocks and that's origin energy as well as Woolies and if we have a look at the best performers a bit of positioning ahead of earnings season we saw Newcrest mining the top performer followed by NAB CBA Westpac and then Rio Tinto and then uh, we saw another bank in there as well. So all up it does look like the materials banks really helping to power along the session. Light volumes but a fantastic day. Correct. Is, it a, is there danger though I guess in spinning off this chemicals business which provides some kind of diversification for the company at a time when mining is coming off a little bit? I think both of these units have its own challenges and by spinning off the unit be able to concentrate on the challenges facing that general chemicals unit and if we have a look at general chemicals it's the largest supplier of industrial chemicals in both Australia as well as New Zealand the main products there are sulfuric acid as well as corsic acid which is used by oil refineries and the likes of blue scope steel and if we have a look at that sector as a whole we know that oil refineries are, slow, uh, are shutting down in Australia we know the car manufacturing space has also been under pressure so, so there are some big challenges for this general uh, chemicals division and it's not surprising that Orica is doing a strategic review on this division so um, I guess the options are to sell it off uh, keep it um, and trying to accelerate its growth or to spin it off and it's a difficult market to be selling off into so spin off probably makes more sense we have a look at earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization in the last financial year it was 112 million dollars for that chemicals division Division. So if you operate on a, a multiple of about seven to seven and a half times, that gives a valuation around the $1 billion mark for that chemicals division. But certainly the market are helping to support Orica shares on that speculation and the stock up 1.6%. Lee, Lee, on this one, your thoughts on G8 Education, which had a, a great run today. I mean, if you look at childcare and early education, especially here in Australia, and look at demand versus supply, there's a massive de uh, demand and supply just doesn't seem to be able to keep up. So the industry as a whole, it's an attractive place to be at the moment. And I think if you have a look at G8 education, it is looking at expansion through acquisition. But if it can look at organic growth as well, that would be a double positive for G8 education. Now, the stock was up 6.4% on that acquisition today. As Scott mentioned, those multiples, very attractive, four times EBIT, which it really does stick very strongly to and that means the stocks up 113 percent throughout the last year but it's not just G8 education that's been doing well we also saw affinity education listing on the market last year in December and on December 9 it floated onto the market and since then the stocks actually up by about 27 percent so it does look like uh, this childcare early education area is an area which is booming at the moment and the fact that we are seeing G8 education expanding and acquiring at sensible multiples is a positive for the stock and the stock price reaction certainly reflecting that today.